Cold Spring, 18 miles. Durango, four. Well, I reckon four miles is better. Hi, right, Sonny. Recognize him? No. I've never seen him before. Well, we'll look him over. Howdy, stranger. You heading for Durango? Yeah, it looks to me like a pretty good place to water my horse and get some hay for him and some feed for the inner man. Durango ain't the worst place in the world. Well, I won't say it's the best. Well, your gentleman's recommendation is good enough for me. We'd like to keep you company. Now, that is, if you don't mind. Why, well, no. I'd be glad to have you side me in. You know, I've been riding alone so long, I... I find myself talking to my horse. <laughs> Is this the best hotel you got in town? One of them. I've seen better, and I've seen worse. You're sort of pessimistic, huh, brother? Huh? I mean, you don't seem to feel in the best of spirits this morning. Well, I felt better, and I felt worse. I see. Sort of neutral, huh? This way. Reception rooms in there. I'll notify the proprietor you're here and looking for accommodations. Well, I didn't know that Durango would be that much interested in my arrival. Durango ain't, but some of the people are. I see. Just go right on in and make yourself at home. You'll be well taken care of. Thanks. You stay here. I'll go get Kelton. Well, this is a right nice little reception room. Nothing. Only I thought you might be interested in knowing that we got a fellow that answers the description of that umbra you've been making inquiries about. Where have you got him? Over in the lockup. All right, we'll take a look at him. It's him, all right, but who's him? Cheyenne. Cheyenne, after all these years. Wait. 
You can't kill him here. All right. I can't kill him here. And maybe, before I get him, he'll get me. That's the gamble. That's my business. Gambling. All right. Turn him loose when I get out of here. Gents, there seems to be some sort of a mystery here. If one of you gents would tell me what it's all about, I'd be much obliged. Oh, we was looking for somebody else, that's all. I see. And I take it you don't want me. No, shucks. We was looking for another fellow all the time. Sure, you look like him, but you ain't him. Mistaken identity, huh? Well, suppose one of you fellas opened that door, I'd have come out of shooting and killed one of you fellas. And then said I'd made a mistake. Oh, of course, I can see that neither one of you fellas had anything to do with my being here. So let's forget it. You couldn't tell me a good place to eat, could you? Yeah, the Durango's across the street. It's a good place for a game and a little shot of red eye. Well, I'll tell you, fellas. I'm pretty well caught up on my dragon. But uh, if you lead me to that grub pile, I'll sure follow you. I can see Durango is going to be some hospitable place. Now, ain't that nice? We aim to be hospitable. <laughs> say, say, that reminds me. Of what? Well, the day I put the notch in this here gun, I tell you how it was it was that. Full of name of Cherokee Jones. Maybe you heard of him. Well, one day he started coming for me with one of these here things. But he plumb missed me with both barrels. Must have been drinking or something. So I went that day and put the notch in this here gun. You know, not to be boasting or anything, but. Just remember old Cherokee boy. Something tells me we shouldn't have brung him in. Well, it was your idea. If anything happens to me, I'm going to blame you. folks of Durango can certainly thank their lucky stars that you've the courage of your convictions, uh, Mr. Anson. Caden, it's my business to print the truth. And for what I've seen in Durango, the truth's been covered long enough. If my paper can make this a law-abiding place for decent citizens to live in, <laughs> well, then I guess I've been repaid. Anson, I warned you that you and your paper are not welcome in Durango. But that before, Mr. Kelton. But it seems to me it's up to the citizens of Durango, not you as an individual, to say whether my paper and me are welcome or not. I'm the one who decides that, Anson. You ain't welcome. If you run that press, I'll make you eat every word of it. Oh, no, he won't. You know, I've heard that printer's ink is indigestible. And I've also heard that there's a heat poisonous to some people's systems. You're a stranger, mister. Most likely you don't know it. 
Crawford. I run Durango. All of which leads me to believe that maybe you've run Durango too long. Go on, put your little strip up, mister. <laughs> mister. Hanson's the name. I'd like to talk to you alone. All right. You know, I've got a heap of talk I want to say to you, too. Alone. You know, before Kelton gets through with that stranger, he'll have him bought off. Or scared off. It ain't no use. I might just as well quit. Changed a bit. The same old low down you always was. Now you know better than that. You know, if I wasn't interested in just what your game here is in Durango, you and me'd have a showdown right now. Ten years ago, I run you out of Pine Flats. Then we met down in the Platte country. And now we meet again. But this time it's my deal with Aces Wild. How much will you take to forget you ever were in Durango? Are you trying to bribe me, Mr. Kelton? Shame on you. Same old safe. Same old safe that you had up in the Pine Flats country, down in the plot. Say, you know, that must be a pretty good one. It's been blown up twice. Say, you and I never did get along. Never could and never will. We don't speak the same language. Well, you understand enough of mine to get this. I'll give you just 48 hours to shake the dust of Durango out of your boots. If you're still here, I'll... You'll what? You or me? It can't be both of us in Durango. My golly, you're right. Well, there'll just be one. What is this? Gosh, we didn't know, but maybe something happened to you. There's going to be plenty happening, but we've got to work fast. There's enough in that safe to make us independent. We'll crack it, and before the smoke clears, we'll be on our way. First, I'm going to get Cheyenne. Come on, have a drink. Got a little trouble getting out your newspaper, mister? Nothing but difficulty. You know, Kelton runs Durango, and he's sure death on me and my newspaper. Well, if Kelton's against your newspaper, I'm for it. How'd you like a partner? Where would I get a partner? They ain't got a chance to print a paper. I'll be your partner. You will? So, <laughs> any price you say. Why, I'd even sell out for a $10 bill today. Well, you won't have to. I'll tell you what you do. You get this old press oiled up. I'll drop in on you later. Uh, hey, hey, boy. Uh, could I speak to you a minute? 
Well, sure. You, you see, I, I was the best horse wrangler this side of the plaque. Uh, uh, but I ain't got no horse to wrangle. Uh, all I got I is a mule. So I'll tell you what you do. You see that buckskin horse down there? Yeah. Well, you go on down there and wrangle him. I'm going here in the restaurant and get something to eat. When I come back, I'll tell you what to do. Go ahead. Yes. Come on, Alawooshes. There he is now. Go ahead. Provoke him to a quarrel. Rile him up. Him to draw his gun. Heck, that'll be your time to get him. And the quicker we get him, the better. Stealing them carrots? No, sir. Uh, I ain't stealing nothing. I, I just borrow them, that's all. Well, you're gonna borrow some lead. Put them back there. Uh, you wouldn't regret the horse and, and the mule and, and, and even myself of a carrot, would you? You know what we do with thieves down here? No, sir. We hang them. <laughs> By the neck? Yeah, heck, until you're dead. <laughs> What's the matter? Oh, this lowlife has been stealing some carrots. Oh, forget it. He's working for me. I told him to buy some carrots. Hey, since when is he working for you, mister? He's been hanging around this town for days. And you just entered here a little while ago with us. Well, I wouldn't enter them if I knew what kind of a polecat you was. Are you calling me a polecat? What did it sound like to you, mister? Why, you... Can't you take a joke, mister? Can't you see I'm laughing? I saw what happened. That slim Bartlett, one of Kelton's cuts. Yeah, I know. I rode into town with him this morning. Well, I tell you, Anson, looks to me like you're going to have plenty of exciting news to publish in the newspaper. <laughs> yeah. You're going to need some extra help. Snowflake. Yeah. Here's just a man for you. You can bear down on that old press of yours and bring the type and sweep up. Can't you, Snowflake? Yes, sir. Well, we're partners. He's hired. Do you remember, you remember telling me about that old fellow that ran the restaurant over there that died kind of sudden? Uh-huh. I don't believe you told me his name, did you? I, uh, I thought maybe I knew him. Well, Edward has a daughter about 14 or 15. Huh. Jed Worth. He and I rode in the same outfit together until he got hurt with an old brock rolling over on him. Hmm. Where do you live, here in town? Uh, down the stage line, on the way to Paiute. Little, little greenhouse, all covered with ivy and flowers. You can't miss it. Oh, I reckon I'll find it. I guess I'll just take me a ride out that way. Well, come on, Slip Lake, and I'll show you your chores. Uh, uh, does I leave Alawishes here, my mule? Leave him here, leave him. Come on. Uh, you got out of that was a lot of trouble. They'll see if you can get this straight. There he is now. Go ahead and see where he goes. Well, we can do that, all right.
Why, it's me, Miss. Uh, I'm a, I'm an old friend of your father's. I just rode into town this morning and I heard about your trouble and thought I'd come out and see if there's anything I could do for you. You don't need to be afraid of me, miss. My name's Morgan, Harry Morgan. Cheyenne Harry, my friends call me. You see, I'm an old friend of your daddy's. He and I used to ride range together good many years ago. Long before you were born, I reckon. Are you Cheyenne Harry, the marshal from down part way? Well, yes, man, I was marshal down there for quite a spell. See, I didn't hear about your dad's passing on until this morning. Now, miss, I didn't mean to come up here to worry you again. But, but why did it have to be my daddy? Well, that's... That's what I come up here to find out, miss. Do you know whether your dad ever had any trouble with Kelton? Or anyone else in this town? Why, yes, with Kelton. Right here in this room. What about? Well, I don't know exactly. It was over some papers, I think, that Daddy had given Kelton to keep for him in his safe. They were mining papers. And Daddy won them back. Why, Kelton said he'd give them to him when he gave him the money he owed him. Well, I don't think Daddy ever owed Kelton anything. Why... Everybody in town here uses Kelton's safe to keep their money and papers in. It's the only safe in town. Yes, I know. You know, I'm slightly acquainted with Mr. Kelton. And I'm very well acquainted with that old safe of his, too. So, he wouldn't give your dad back his mining papers unless he paid him some money. When your dad refused, why... This happened to him, huh? It's Kelton. What'll I do? Oh, I reckon this is as good a time as any for a showdown. Let him in. to tell you how sorry I was to learn of your father's accident, Martha. He didn't by any chance come to tell her who did it. I saw your horse outside. So I expected to see you. Well, now, don't you be a bit surprised if you see me around quite often. Martha's father gave you for safekeeping. For a stranger, you take a lot on your shoulders, mister. Why, you talk as though I had something to do with worse meeting up with that 45. Why, well, say, the world. But you have a pretty good idea who did do it. And one more thing. Don't send any of them hard killers over to pick a choir with me. I always prefer to meet the principal himself. Now, look here, Martha, I'll tell you... Now, that... listen, listen. Come on. Get out. Don't put your hand on that gun. Or you won't see the sun down tonight. Now, come on, get going. You're frightening the little lady. Jasper just went into the thin air. We're heading nowhere and getting there fast. Go 
Open the door, honey. Sorry, Miss, all this had to happen just after you've been through so much trouble. I'm only sorry my pop wasn't here to see Kelton get it. Well, I reckon it's about four hours till sundown. I think you better come into town with me. You'll be a lot safer there. You got a horse here? Yes, I'll get it. Won't take me long. Say, Mr. Cheyenne, ain't you kind of nervous about sundown? Oh, Lord, no. Sundown's got to come for all of us, son. Why worry? I'll get you. I'll follow you. We won't wait to clean that safe. You boys get back to the shack. Get plenty of fuse and powder and meet me back in town. And after we blast the safe, then what, Calvin? Yeah. Do we split right away? Or do we have to wait? I always cut you boys in equal with me, haven't I? Get going. Hmm. When do we split? That's our friend Kelton. Yes, and he was coming from Daddy's claim. I wonder what he was doing there. I don't know. There's nothing there but a hole in the ground where Daddy said there was plenty of gold if he'd only had the money to dig it out. Well, if the gold's in the ground, it'll be safe from Kelton. He don't like to work well enough to dig it up. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you can see the tunnel from here. Uh-huh. Well, I'd sure like to know what he was doing in there. So would I. Well, we're going to find out. You've got everything ready? Sure. I told that fellow Anson that he couldn't run a paper in Durango. And I'm going to keep my word. I want you to fix enough powder Put that paper out of business once and for all. What's the use of that? If we're going to clear out of here, what do we care what he does? You'll do as I tell you, Herr Carr. All right. Once you've done that, while the people are trying to figure out what happened, I want you to blast the safe. I'll be playing cards with the sheriff. Once you've got the safe planted and the fuse lit, make yourself seen in the street somewhere so you'll be in the clear, too. Get me? Sure, that's easy. When do we touch a safe? As near sundown as you figure. He seems kind of worried about sundown. I would be too. I knew at sundown it was going to be me or someone else. Wouldn't you? I ain't saying I'd hanker for such a situation. Hey! Do you fellas want me to do anything to your horses? No, we just thought we'd leave them here in the shade, that's all. 
pretty hot over in the street. You don't mind. Oh, that's all right. You'll leave them there all day if you want to. It's a sense you won't hesitate to commit another. We gotta keep our eyes open. You bet. Both of them. Oh, Snowflake. Yeah? Take my horse Sonny down to Blacksmith's shop and have him tighten that front shoe. Uh, yes, sir. And then what do I do? Well, then you come back here and do whatever Mr. Hanson tells you. Yes, sir. Are oh, you working for him, ain't you? Yes, sir. I should. <laughs> Oh, this looks to be as good a place as any. Go on in. I'll show you what we do with the bomb we made. Oh, hey, look. Yes, sir. The man who I work for said for you to look at this horse's feet. Yeah, sure, that's all I do is look at a horse's feet. Yeah, sir. That's what I saw. Uh, when, when, when you, if he needs a uh, shoe, you, you put it on him, and, and I'll be right back, sir. All right, I'll take him. Now, all we've got to do is get high up and aim for the front of the newspaper office and let her go. And when she hits, she explodes. And when she explodes... I ain't nowhere around. Now, who's going to shoot this bomb into the newspaper office? You or me? Well, it ain't going to be me. No. Nah. I suppose I got to do it. Pick up that stuff and come on. See? Do you? Do it. You suppose he heard us? Maybe. Well, we better hurry anyway. All right, honey. And now what do we do, Miss Danson? Well, just roll it forward. And I'll show you how we run the test. Let's get this press covered up. Come on, Snowflake, get your head. Come on, go in the back room and stay there. That's 50 you owe me. Your deal. We'll settle at the end of the game. Sure. What time you got? About 5.30? Thanks. Now, you folks stay right here. Don't go back in that office no matter what you do. I'm going to slip around the corner and see if I can get my eye on those fellas with the bomb. All right. Light it. did that didn't accomplish what they set out to do. What happened? Why, they tried to wreck the place. All they did was blow out a window. Had the press covered or they'd have ruined that. I wonder who done that. Well, that's kind of your worry, isn't it, Mr. Sheriff? By the way, what, what time does the sun set in Durango? Well, this time of year, about six o'clock. Why? Well, the reason I asked you was because about that time there's going to be another explosion. A heap more important than this one. I wonder what he meant by that. Who is he? Cheyenne Harry. He's been gunning for me for years. Gave notice today. It's his life or mine. Well, I ain't running away. I'll be here. Maybe I'll lock him up. Why that? I'd just as soon get it over with. Are you ready? 
When can we go? Any time you say. But how about the stuff in the safe? How are we going to get it out after we crack it? It's out already. Say, what are you trying to do, double cross us? Yeah, how about it? I haven't yet, have I? No, but you might. Now get this straight. I've got enough evidence to hang the Perry any time I want to. Now get out of here. Wait for me downstairs. I'll light the fuse. Go on, go on. got to say, well, I'm in a hurry. I'm in a hurry, too. What about the papers you've got in that safe? Belongs to old man Wood, moving the ownership of his claim. What? I, a combination. You want me to refresh your memory? All right. All right. Come on, I'm waiting, Kelton. I can't remember the combination. I don't know the rest somewhere. Oh, you'll win. That sounded like it came from my place, Sheriff. Yeah, let's go and see what happened. Cheyenne! Kelton got him all right. Yeah, he wasn't lying. He cleaned out the safe. What do you suppose he did with the stuff? Ah, uh, there's only one place. You know where. Take my 
Well, you're just wasting your time trying to hang this thing on me. Why, Kelton has been working this racket for years. Moves into a town where there's no bank, gets the people to deposit their money and valuables in his safe, and he cleans the safe and hightails it. You lose. Maybe you're right. Well, let's get Kelton. Don't let him get away, Sheriff. I'd advertise every man in this room. Come with me. Now you're talking. What happened, Snowflake? They shot him. They done it. Them two that you was arguing with this morning, they tried to take Sonny, but they didn't. I'm afraid he won't pull through, mister. Listen, Snowflake, have you got any... You got any kin folks? No, sir. Nobody. But now I wish it. That's all. Mr. Science. Will you take care of my old mule? I'm afraid that he's going to be a little hungry without me. You bet I will, Snowflake. I'll take him right along with me and Sonny. But you're going to be all right. Yeah, I'm going to be all right. Now... Get to your horses, everyone. We're not coming back till we get Kelton and his gunmen. We thought maybe you were trying to give us a slip. Oh, no. You know better than that. We've got to work fast. Everything that was in that safe, the money, the papers that give the rights to this mine, and other things, are in that bag. Take one half of it. You boys can split the other between you. So you're getting plumb careless, Kelton. Where's your gun? Well, in my hurry to get out of Durango, I must have lost it. Maybe you boys will let me have one of yours. Yeah, sure. Anytime. It's your last chance, Kelton. The law's right behind us. We're moving fast. Give me that bag. You wouldn't leave me like this. I've always played fair with you boys. Yeah, sure you have. But we ain't playing anymore. We're going to take what's coming to us. Well, you're dealing the game, Slim. And a man without a gun 
Can't argue with the fellow that's got one. Run down, Kelton. You're right, Cheyenne. And the sun's in your eyes for the last time.
Sheriff, I, I guess I owe you a lot. Oh, it's just the other way around. We're in debt to you, Cheyenne. Well, thanks. And Mr. Anson, you'll take good care of Martha, huh? Sure will. And remember, my share in the old newspaper goes to her. But where are you going, Mr. Cheyenne? Well, I'll tell you, honey. I spend most of my life, you know, in Wyoming. That's up north, in the cattle country. And the ball has had a... The ball has had a hankering to... to see some money. So I'm riding south. Down to a place called Ghost Town. So long, honey. Bye. So long, sir. So long, Cheyenne. <laughs> 